Deep conversations with the right people are priceless, and ideas are formed in the crucible of authentic, connected, and sometimes controversial conversations. No ideas are off the table because why would they be? Join us on Inquisitive Souls as we lead with curiosity, empathy, and a massive heaping of juvenile humor. Join us on this learning journey. All right, before we saddle up, I want to tell you about the Dad Edge Alliance, which is my absolute favorite community on the whole entire internet. It's a group of, at the time of this, my recording, it's about 250 guys. It's growing all the time, <clears throat> but it is a community unlike anything I've ever seen. And I don't know if you could hear that thunder that just happened, but that is a sign that what I'm saying is truly, truly important. That's right. Thunder. Thunder happened when I'm talking about the Dad Edge Alliance. So listen, if you're a guy and you are feeling like your friendships, or your relationships are superficial, you get around, you shoot the shit, but you're never going deeper. <clears throat> you don't feel safe to do that. Um, and you know that there's something more. I'm telling you, join this community. It is insanely life-changing, okay? Like we got guys in there from all walks of life, and but they all have one thing in common. They're trying to elevate fatherhood by improving themselves. They're leaning in. They're supporting each other. They're learning from one another. They're learning about themselves. They're challenging themselves. They're setting goals. They're holding each other accountable, but they are all doing it in a place that's totally safe and totally just overflowing with bro love. And I'm trying to say that in a manly way, bro love, right? So, you know, one of the things that I've learned throughout my own personal development journey, which is a journey that will last the rest of my life, obviously, is that the people you surround yourself with are that like, that's one of the most important choices you can make. Many of you have probably heard the quote, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And when I first heard that, like logically, I got it like, okay, that makes sense. But I never could have imagined what it actually meant, how transformative it is to get a better, higher caliber, more open, loving, caring, relentless group of men in your life. So that's what this fucking community provides. I mean, I can't, I don't know how to state it in a way that really truly conveys how I feel about it. Like maybe I'll just say fuck a lot more. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, the stuff that goes on here is crazy. It's, they've got community calls. They've got you know, accountability teams. They've got amazing content, free books. We're building courses. Um, we have experts come in, New York Times bestselling authors, Navy SEALs to speak to the guys. And the guys are learning and they're growing and they're building relationships with one another and they're bringing a better version of themselves into every, into every aspect of their life. So please uh, think about it. Look around you. Do you have the group of people around you that are going to help you create the fucking life you want? Most people don't. Most people don't even know there's an alternative. And most people don't even understand how important it is. So I'm telling you from my own personal experience and witnessing hundreds of people have the same experience, it changes everything. Okay, so listen, if you want to know more, you can either always send me a message or you can go to gooddadproject.com slash alliance and I'll keep the, I'll put that link in the show notes page. Do it and it will help you become emotionally fucking excellent. Now onto the show. This is the kind of conversation that I started this podcast to have actually, because it's really just two guys uh, with a shared interest. Well, one of them is sitting on a rickety stool. If anybody, Tanya, if you're listening to this podcast, I just want a new stool for Christmas from Fully, fully fully.com. This is, I don't have any kind of affiliate agreement. I just actually want one for Christmas. And I, I think Tanya doesn't listen to my podcast, so so I may have to get more uh, specific. But regardless, uh, I started this podcast because I wanted to have cool conversations like this. And the conversation with Nick Hemmert uh, was one of those conversations because we both share, uh, a passion for appreciative inquiry and bringing this work into the world. We're both part of some of the same communities and uh, we both love what we're doing and uh, are always trying to get better and 
you know, recognizing that uh, we both recognize that sometimes that can be uncomfortable, and uh, but we're on a learning journey. And so I was really, we, you know, we talk about our history a little bit in the podcast, but it was really nice to catch up with him. I saw him a few weeks ago in Cleveland, and it was great to catch up and see where he's at and see the work he's doing. And uh, I'm sure at some time and some place, we'll definitely continue to be a member of the LEAF community. Uh, which we talk about also in the podcast, but I suspect that there'll be some time in the not too distant future where we find some amazing way to create together. So let me tell you about my buddy, Nick. He's the founder and chief strategist at the Center for Awesomeness. I love that. Uh, Oh, the Center for Awesomeness is an advocate for possibility. A curator of all things awesome. A husband to Monica, a father to Griffin and Isabel, the best job ever. Nick is creating solutions for the challenges at the intera- intersection of conscious leadership, fulfillment, spirituality, and vocation. Why? Well, we're greatly in need of practical ways to intentionally counterbalance the light and dark of our world to clear the noise and create more space for awe in our professional and personal lives. He's currently merging his problem-solving and attention to detail expertise in information technology consulting with guiding conscious leaders and their organizations through forward-moving conversations. And let me tell you, Nick is a master at creating those types of conversations. So enjoy the conversation, and uh, I know I certainly did, and I'm really, really happy that I can... uh, call Nick a friend. It really means a lot. And I'm sure as we say in the podcast, we will talk again. So good luck, brother. And we'll talk soon. Hello, Nick Hemmer. Welcome to the show. How's that for a rapid fire start? It's great. It's great. Yeah. How you been, man? I'm good. I'm really good. Uh, Yes. I can see you're doing some great work. Yeah, no, I'm excited um, to uh, to continue to see our, our work come into life in the world, all the all of the, uh, the the things that have been, uh, you know, when you start a company, starting an, an enterprise, a, a business, a solopreneur, whatever you want to call it, a thing, a project, uh, it never happens as fast as you want it to. Um, and so, you know, in recent in recent weeks, I've been as patient as I possibly can in uh, in seeing how um, uh, our work can continue to develop, and it and, and things just come up. Isn't that isn't that funny how that works? So, <clears throat> just so everybody's aware, we're talking about pretty much talking about appreciative inquiry, which I'm sure we're going to spend the majority of this conversation focusing on. But um, yeah, I find the same thing, man. It, uh, it like the more people I talk to about it, basically everybody that I talk to about it is like, oh my god, that makes so much sense. And there's every question I ask, you know, every kind of generative question I ask, every team I work with, it's just people have, I I know we always say this when we go to these, uh, you know, uh, flourishing leadership, uh, leaf training, uh, but you know, the world is calling for this, man. Yeah. And the, and the ability for us to, to, to find places as I'm talking, that's kind of what I'm talking about here with the, with the progression. It's just a matter of finding those places in the progression of our, of our work, of my work, um, and finding places to have those generative conversations and, you know, I have them every day. Um, and the, uh, but then to lead them into a, a larger context of a, of a team or, uh, or into, uh, you know, a community, you know, learning community, uh, or into, just finding those places where people can can use the use the assistance of uh, of appreciative inquiry or use the the assistance of of our work is uh, is always the fun part. Yeah, no kidding. <clears throat> I don't know if I, I I'm sure I have told you this, but I'm going to say it again just in case I haven't. But <clears throat> like it's been a crazy a uh, couple of years I think for both of us since we met. And, totally. And we met at the Front Row Dads Retreat, and you were the very first person I talked to. Did you did you do you remember this? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I was standing outside <clears throat> I was standing outside of the room like registering uh basically and I was shitting my pants, man. Like I was like what am I even doing here? Like this is insane. Hal Elrod's in that room and you know like I I'm like basically sweats running all down my armpits and stuff and uh you know and I walk in and you within seconds came up to me and started talking to me and I'm like oh my god these people are amazing. And uh, so I just, you know, I probably said thank you to you for that uh, before, but I mean, just in case I haven't, I want to say thank you uh, 
uh, again, because you really made me feel welcome immediately. And that was a big leap for me, <clears throat> or it felt like a big leap for me. It was like way, way outside my comfort zone. I'd never really gone to a retreat or anything like that and <clears throat> had never been around like these people that I placed on a gigantic pedestal. You know, and I, I just didn't feel I, I wasn't sure that I even belonged there. And uh, so, yeah, you made me feel super, super welcome. And it, uh, it was I really appreciate it. Well, you know, to, to give you some pre some some before that moment uh, context, you know, um, I had um, and I think you and I came across appreciative inquiry in a similar way. Uh, I think I've heard this. It's be fun to talk about this now. Um, but in that summer of uh, 2016, um I had uh, I'm, I'm kind of done a, a pretty big career transition for myself. And in 2014, I sold the business that I was that I had operated for nine years. It was a technology consulting related business, and um, and I was like, I can't do technology consulting right now. Uh, I, I really need to focus my energy on uh, on a larger type of consulting. Didn't know what it was at the time, but I just knew from working with uh, you know medical practices, with working with restaurants, with working with all these different small business clients, that they kept buying this tech stuff, and then they were still as miserable or as challenged or as not making revenue as, as they wanted to. And and there was a lot of pointing fingers back at me for selling them the tech. But you know, so mm-hmm. I was like, there's got to be a bigger way to ask questions. And so for, for, you know, for two years, I essentially went and worked for another business, uh, trying to find some ways to, to, to go about doing a new form of consulting. And, uh, in that summer of 2016, I came across a podcast, uh, from Hal, uh, who was talking about miracle morning and, and I have a pretty big spiritual meditation daily practice already. And, and I found this book and I was like, this is amazing. And, um, and it was, and I came across, uh, you know, this, uh, a podcast, um, uh, where you had been on there, and I can't remember if it was Front Row Factor or if it was another one, where you were talking about your book. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, "Holy crap! This guy, this is amazing!" Like that, that the, there one is there that there's a podcast talking about you know uh, being a dad, uh, two talking about the vulnerabilities of being a man uh, in a relationship and things that happened. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I think that's probably where I heard the advertisement for the front row dads retreat where we met for the first time. So you were really, uh, you know, and I think in that process, you guys might've talked about it, about AI, but at some point in that summer, I had heard about AI through, um, either, uh, our colleague, John Berghoff was on a, was on a podcast, maybe it was Hal's talking about AI and it was all around the same time. It had to have been the same week week where I was listening to all this stuff and I was like, holy crap, I got to meet this Jason guy. I got to meet this uh, Berghoff guy. I got to meet this Roman guy. And, um, and uh, you know, luck would have it. Uh, you were all in Philadelphia in October two years ago. And, uh, <laughs> Isn't that funny? And, and I did, and I just, I literally had to like sprint to you um, because I was like, thank you for, you know, th- I don't remember what exactly I said to you, but I do know that I was very appreciative, you know, of you, um, you know, showing up uh, and talking about, um, the real, the realness of life and the things that had happened to you and sharing your story, um, and doing that in a, uh, in a very vulnerable way in a podcast and in a book for that matter. Isn't that funny? Yeah. <clears throat> so I, you know, it's funny. I, I like my whole personal transformation started with the miracle morning too. Uh, that, that was kind of the first person, like what I would consider personal development thing I did. But I remember hearing Berg, John Berghoff, um, who is our teacher and mentor, I would say, one of one of our teachers and mentors <clears throat> yeah, uh, on Hal Elrod's podcast. And it was them talking, I, th- I think it was, I'm gonna, I, I believe it was like the fall-ish or, or winter or something of 2015. And they were talking about how they used uh, AI to design the first best year ever blueprint is what it was. Mm. And <clears throat> I remember listening to it and just I, I can remember where I was, like where I was driving from, and it was at night, and I was in the car, and I remember thinking, like, God, that is such a cool idea. Like, uh, it's, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I, I no, I, 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 so I, so I heard that episode in that it, it was in July to you know July August time frame two years ago, and I immediately came home and I started googling anything and everything I could find about appreciative inquiry. Yeah, me too. Um, and it was, and I didn't find anything. <laughs> 
<laughs> I found stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. But like, but I was like, oh my god, this is so, this is so like uh, academic and very high and like oh. very deep and 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 you know and and I I think you um uh yeah so like so I that's why I kind of found John's podcast I think during that process and I was like oh, I just need to listen more to this guy. Uh, yeah, I was talk about I it. was the same way. Like I I. I uh, was super interested and I went online and I bought some books and I'm reading these books and I'm like, who talks like this? Like, am I like, it's in this soaring rhetoric and I'm like, I feel <laughs> basically intellectually challenged reading this. I'm like, am I, what am I not understanding here? Like, so I'm like no, at some level knowing that this is an incredibly powerful idea. Uh, but on the other level, like on another level, not really understanding the language and and how that would connect with people, you know, but regardless, I went right yeah. down the rabbit hole. And then the front row dad's retreat was the first, was the first uh, event I had been to like live event that I had been to that, uh, that had been facilitated using AI by Berghoff. Mm-hmm. And I just remember, <clears throat> I remember the incredible feelings of it. You know, I remember, yeah. I remember the feelings of, you know, we did like a future visualization and I remember the feelings of like talking about sitting on my front porch and what my kids would say to me. And like, it was just so, uh, I felt not only connected to myself in a way that I, really wasn't used to, but I felt connected to everybody else in the room. And I was like, man, I got to learn this shit more. Like I got to think. 100%. Yeah. I mean, I, I I walked away from that, from that event, um, you know, basically being like, I got to get more. And, um, and at the time, you know, Berghoff didn't have a, a course, you know? Right. And, um, and so that didn't get announced until April of 17 or, or like, I think it was like March of 17. And I'm literally, I remember where I was. I was on vacation with my family in March of 17. And I was like, I got to get to Cleveland like in like two weeks. Like this is happening and I got to get there. And, you know, and I couldn't get there and just couldn't, didn't, couldn't work out those logistics. And I ended up starting in October of, uh, October of 17. Um, and, uh, but I was, I remember uh, talking to Bowman, uh, you know, mm-hmm. a, a colleague of our friend, really close friend of yours and a person I met, you know, at the dad's retreat with you. Um, I remember being on the phone with him on Facebook messenger, uh, as he's driving home from the April retreat, um, telling me all about like all the cool stuff that they learned, all the cool stuff you guys talked about, like how AI was going to change, change everything. Um, and it was, I mean, it was, it was like nine o'clock my time and he it was 11 o'clock Eastern and he's like driving through Michigan up, up into the, to the, to get over the bridge to go to Canada. Yeah. And it was, it was like, Oh my God, I got to, I was, you know, I had severe FOMO. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Were you at the first, were you at the first one or I don't know if you were. No, I wasn't. No, I was not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so the, so yeah, like just to, uh, um, just so many things have happened in, in this, you know, and to bring it, to bring it around, like kind of to present day, you know, I just got back from my fourth, uh, front row dad's retreat, uh, last, uh, Saturday, last Friday night. And, um, and to see the, the power of AI in, in practice. And in this case, I actually got to lead, um, as a, you know, as a facilitator oh, awesome. for that event, um, or as a leadership person for that event. And, um, and it's just amazing to see the, like I said in the beginning, when I started out, like, you know, you you want the you want to be doing this work like now, and you can in some capacities, but in certain circumstances, you just got to wait for um, happenstance, serendipity, you know, timing, whatever you want to whatever you want to call it, to uh, to make it be, um, you know, full circle. Yeah, for sure. So, t- like, what did you do at the uh, what did you do at the front row dads retreat? How did you participate? Uh, so we had, um, so we, we, the front row dad retreat is, uh, you know, roughly three days. Um, and, um, we did, uh, a handful of AI exercises. We did, uh, um, when we start, we, we started with an AI one-on-one interview, you know, where essentially they, you know, we, we, the workbook has a handful of, of generative questions Mm -hmm. and we got to sit one-on-one with another dad that we had never met before and, you know, kind of go down the, go down the rabbit hole of, of, uh, of their life as a dad, of their life as a, uh, as a husband, um, you know, what's life like is with their, with their kids and just use those generative questions to explore, um, you know, the, the life of another person, 
Um, and this happened all within the first like 45 minutes of yeah, the retreat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's how, that's how deep you, know, we go, you go pretty deep, pretty fast. Um, and then we did, uh, we did a handful of, uh, what we call in, in the AI circles of, uh, you know, reflect, connect and sharing, mm-hmm. you know, where you write down some answers, you connect with a, with a peer or a person or a small group, and then you report out to, uh, to, to a larger group, you know, what, what the, uh, what you found. And we explored a handful of those, um, generative questions that were similar to the AI interview, but you know, mm-hmm. there were some other ones that we had, that, um, had been crafted by Berghoff and John Broman, uh, in the workbook. Uh, I think that one of the more powerful exercises that was AI, uh, which I think you've actually done in your work, is the ask give uh, exercise. You know where um, where we put up uh, two two big two big labels on the wall. One said ask, one said give, and as a way to um, you know look to connect with each other at a deeper level, we uh, put up the things that we're really needing help with. We need, mm. We're really asking for help for. I haven't done uh, this what actually. We could, what we could, what we could really use some assistance with, you know, in the context of being a dad, in the context of being together this weekend, uh, and then um, what could we offer? What value could we give? Uh, you, you know, you was, was the other side of the of the of the wall, and so we we gather around that that wall in a in a, in a semicircle and all looking at the ask give and. Essentially, we have tiny post-its in our hands, and we all write down, you know, what we could ask, what we could what 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 we could ask of the other guys, and what we could give to the other guys. And we did that like the f- beginning of the first morning, um, the beginning of the first day, and um, it was powerful. I mean, it's just powerful. Wow. So how did it? I know I, I actually haven't done that, and I never I haven't heard of that. So how did he? How did that get set up? Like, so what was that? Was there a, a question related that, that set that thing up? That exercise up? No, I, I mean, the, the exact setup, we, we had the, oh, Berghoff was the one who <clears throat> actually did the, the, you know, the real, uh, the formal setup. Um, but the, but the context around it was, you know, um, uh, an appreciative inquiry, especially in the leaf approach to appreciative inquiry, which we can, you know, share what the leaf approach is for the, those mm-hmm. listening, listening. That's the, the leading with experiential appreciative facilitation that's the certificate certification that John Berghoff at the Flourishing Leadership Institute uh, offers, mm-hmm. um, and so in our approach to gathering as a as a group or as a community or as a team, we always center ourselves around purpose. Uh, and so the night before, we had gathered on the, why were we here? Why was it important for us to be there for ourselves, for the other dads that are there, and for their for the and for the families that were impacted by this, and that kind of set the stage for a level of depth that nobody was playing. This is not no surface level. We're going to talk about sports and, you know, in our, in our businesses. Um, this, this was like, no, we're getting, we're getting real, real, real deep, real fast, real connected, real fast. And so the, on the next day when we did the ask give, it was just kind of a natural progression <clears throat> to, um, to kind of bring in the idea of why we're, we, why we were here, we're here to get, you know, create a brotherhood of dads who are family men uh, first and businessmen second. And what can we do to help uplift uh, or elevate our, uh, our 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 fellow brothers and fellow 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 dads? Uh, and this was the exercise that was kind of offered up in that process. That's a, such a great idea. You know, I did this. Uh, I did this exercise with my team. It's, it's amazing what's happening, actually. So I've used uh, AI uh, with my team and a number of other teams at work um, to, you know, uh, do our core values, uh, define our core values, and totally. And today, what we did was we did a ninety-minute session on embedding our core values into our DNA and our operating system. It's awesome. Oh yeah, it was cool. And so what I did was. I really, because we had gone through sort of the process, like up until that point, another session, we really just started with first one was, um, first question was basically like, you know, reflect on a time when you've seen either, either yourself or one of our team, you know, uh, living our core values in a way that was especially important. To, it seemed especially important to you. And so, you know, we did a write, pair, share, basically. I, we didn't pair, actually. So we did, we just did group a group share. So five or six people got, you know, got up yeah. and they, just amazing yeah. stories, man. Like it's just, it's just to, to, just to take the time to celebrate the best in one another. I mean, what, there's, what a fucking awesome way to spend time, you know? Like, <laughs> so, I mean, it's, 
Yeah. I mean the, 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 um, you know, for, for a retreat situation, you know, uh, that ass give was a, was a, was a tone setter. Mm -hmm. And what happened that was, so, so what happened from that? So we set the purpose together. We did a purpose related piece, you know, that set the, that set the tone for the whole three days we're together. The next day we, uh, you know, we did a specific like ask give, like what are the exact things you need help with? What can you offer help with? What can you give value towards? And then for the lunches and the dinners and the breakfasts that followed over the course of the next two days, you knew who you wanted to have breakfast with. Right. You knew who you wanted to go on a, you know, or spend a little bit of time after we were done with our, you know, with our, with our organized, um, you know, windows of time for the retreat. Um, I mean, it just, it just, it just said it. And so in a situation like what you're talking about with using, uh, you know, a, a strengths-based question or generative question to, to embed uh, the, uh, this stuff into your team, you know, what we did at the end of the retreat was we talked about, you know, what are the pillars our core values as, as a, as a, as a community, as a brotherhood of dads and front row dads, uh, what are those values? And so we did the exercise to get to the values that you're just now talking about embedding because our future, you know, agenda here essentially is to, you know, figure out ways to uh, embed those, uh, those guiding principles, um, those values into the community as front row dads, as the operating system. Yeah. So, amazing. so if we, it's amazing. And then, and then, then you can, you know, you use that, how, how, how does that help us, you know, uh, operate our, uh, our, you know, our, our meetings and things like that. It essentially sets the tone for the, for the themes that will go into, um, to your conversations, to the meetings, to, you know, it, it opens up the door. Cause, cause as guys like context, I think is, is a lot of things, uh, might be, that might be a way for, for everybody, for both, you know, men and women, but, having a little bit of context, um, I think is helpful to, to structure this, um, you know, to structure any kind of conversation, uh, you know, to know, like, do we want to go deeper on, um, on, uh, like mental health mm -hmm. was a, was a big, um, mental health, emotional mastery. Those are kind of grouped together as one guiding principle or value that we're going to continue to push forward in the community. And so now I can go to anybody in the community, you know, from now until uh, whenever and say, Hey man, tell me about how you're, how you're using um, mental health or emotional mastery, how you're learning that or how you're using that within your family. Um, and that starts a beautiful conversation just like you did start a beautiful conversation today with your team. Yeah, absolutely. And so, totally. And so what, what, what I wanted to do is I wanted to walk out of there. This is more of a design session. So I wanted to walk out of there with three concrete ideas that we could implement right away. And so what we did, yeah. and so what we accomplished in 90 minutes was freaking nuts. Like, so what I did was I, we opened with that question. Then I, I, I just asked three other questions. You know, one was actually straight from Berghoff, I think, but it was how might we catch, acknowledge and celebrate, uh, when we see people, you know, living our core values. That was one question. Mm -hmm. Another question mm -hmm. was, so we have these, we have a team meeting to start the week um, every Monday. And so I really wanted to know, I want them to design this meeting. So it was like, how might we, I don't remember the exact question, but something like the fact that like, something to the effect of how might we create a Monday morning meeting that, uh, that, uh, acknowledges and builds on our core values. Like how can we incorporate our yeah. core values into our Monday meeting and, and make our meeting a, an opportunity to build on those core values? And the last thing was um, how might, what processes can we create an, impl what, what processes can we create and implement that might, uh, you know, help us more fully live our core values more fully. And anyways, by the end of the, yeah. the 90 minutes, what we, awesome. yeah, what we came up with, man. So broke into three, they broke them into three groups. Each one worked on one of them. And then we did a, you know, quick round table. Everybody presented. Then it's like, what did you love? What would you like to see? And what we ended up with was, um, we ended up with a beautiful meeting agenda. And what they came up with too was like group, like rotating facilitation of this Monday morning meeting. And the facilitator will be the one that asks a generative question about the core value that we're coming up with that week, or th that we're that we're gonna we're gonna really talk about and work on that week. And then the second team came up with this this star of the week program and how we're going to do that. And then the last group was basically came up with the, the skeleton of a continuous, like a continuous improvement program that's connected to our core values. And this was in 90 minutes. 
And <laughs> like, and you know, one thing, I don't know about you, one thing that I am super fascinated with, and I know John talked about this at the last leave training, but I am really interested in design thinking, like, because that's where, mm-hmm. that is where the rubber hits the road. And I, I, I'm not very good at that right now. Like, I mean, it's a pretty new concept to me. And even though we've done some really cool, like amazing stuff in the leaf, um, in the, in the leaf training, I think there's a huge opportunity there, man. Yeah, the, I mean the the design part of of any engagement um, is uh, is is the is the advance is like the the level five advancement or you know whatever level yeah. number you want to put on it, but it's just a higher level. And you know, you you and I have had conversations in the past about skill development, and you know, it's just one of those things where you know we have we're you know we're very I think both of us are very intentional about how we. Uh, decide on what skills we want to, you know, uh, take on and then what, how do we want to pr- actively create uh, challenges to ourselves to, to, to develop those skills, you know, yeah. um, to, to, to make them be a regular practice, you know, whether it be, you know, you're learning a unicycle or, you know, or my, you know, um, focus on, um, focusing how to make meditation, um, be, you know, a little bit more practical in my life. Mm. Right. Um, and so like the, but, but in all, in all, you know, or in this design thinking situation where we're like, as, as leaders of teams, um, you know, we have to figure out ways to, to get them to come alive, right. Or to be inquisitive or to be curious or to, um, you know, to design, uh, how they want their work to be because, in the workplace, what you're doing is not a common. Oh thing. God, no. Yeah, I mean, it's just like you know, in, in a my and client engagements with with <clears> folks, <throat> um, when we do these questions, I mean, uh, the 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 phrase that comes up around uh, the leaf community a lot is that this shit just works, right? And um, and it does. It totally works. And um, when, when we, you get somebody in a room for sixty to ninety minutes, and you walk them through uh, through the through through an approach that we have that um, that that builds on itself uh, and gets to a place where they can um, you know feel uh, feel alive, where they can feel proud, where they can feel all these uh, uplifting and generative emotions that they generally don't feel probably uh, a lot every day. Um, it just kicks on a flow state for teams to be able to come up with what they did for you in 90 minutes, right? Yeah, it, yeah. it really, it really, really does. So I'd lo- I know one of the things I'm super, I'm super interested in what you're doing right now. And so maybe, can you like, since you took the training, so that was October, uh, 2017, it's hard, it probably feels like way, yep. way more than a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, no, it, 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 yeah. So like, what it, if you, no, it does. so you know, what do you work, like, what are you working on? I mean, maybe after you left the training, I mean, I, I would love people to understand kind of the journey that you've taken to get from like, you know, how did you dip your toe in the water after you left a sort of, you know, after you left or started the certification program or maybe after you finished it and like, you know, what was that like and who did you reach out to and uh, what was the, what was the uh, result? Yeah. So when I, you know, kind of going back to my, the story I was sharing earlier about, you know, um, how I came about the podcast and how I came about, you know, n- being introduced to you as, uh, and your book and your work, um, you know, was the, I was just, I was in this huge search seeking for better ways to get people to, uh, to work together. Um, and so I, I, I mean, I spent a lot of time, I've joined five or six different, you know, masterminds. I've traveled all around uh, the United States over the last two years, trying to find teachers, um, you know, programs, people that um, essentially to build my network, but also to, to, to see what's going on out there in the world. And, um, and you know, when I came upon Leaf, it was like, oh my gosh, this makes sense. I mean, I put my, I put my whole master's program, uh, my formal master's program on pause this last 12 months. Did you? Um, to focus specifically on AI, um, because I, while I think it's important for us, you know, in, 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 in our lives to, to grow and get that knowledge and get that insight, uh, it's also important for us to actually ex- to process and to actually implement and integrate that knowledge. Oh my God. Um, totally. So, so that, I mean, that's the skill development part that I was talking about a couple moments ago is, is that, you know, the, we can attain it, um, you know, but then if we don't use it, it's gone. And so, you know, the, after going to my, to my first, uh, leaf event, um, I had already had a, you know, a local event set up here in Denver where I'm from. 
um, that was going to happen a couple weeks after the first leaf event. Uh, I was selling tickets to it. Um, you know, it fell dramatically on its face uh, <laughs> after I got back. Was that the, was that um, a women I, leader retreat? Is that what that was? Or, no, oh, that's totally, to, yeah. To, so there's, there's a progression of events that have happened here, uh, since that, but I, I basically, I, I, I signed up, uh, as quickly as I could after the, after, after the, after the April event. Uh, and I asked Berghoff, can I come to any elevation calls? Can I come to anything to make me learn so that when I come to you in, in October, I'm ready to go. And so he gave me access to all their classes and all this stuff as part of the program, which is what you do when you become a part of the LEAF program. You get access to this library of, of good stuff. And so I walked into that event last October, knowing a, having a good knowledge of what I was going to do to apply it. And then I had an immediate event afterwards. And, um, and what I've learned in the last uh, 12 months is, that is, my, is, you know, is, is a good thing in selling, which I still haven't figured quite out yet how to get people, get butts in seats for my own events. Mm-hmm. That's a whole other conversation. Um, but at least I got immediately uh, to, um, to practice and to, um, to give this material within two weeks after I got home. Wow. And so, um, and that was great, huge learning experience. Um, and then, uh, in, uh, around the same time, I, I was so passionate and so excited about this stuff. Anybody that I met, uh, in Denver, I would tell them about it. Yep. And so, so I told this woman about it. Um, uh, and she, she, you know, she, she was a, she was a panel speaker at a, at a, at a meetup that I went to. And she called me like two or three months later and said, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm starting this mentoring program. And I really, I, I remember you talking to me at this, at this meetup that we met like two couple months ago, would you be willing to talk to me about it? And I said, heck yeah. So I got on the phone with her and essentially at the end of the day, I helped her to do two or three things for a weekend event that she had in April mm. of, of, uh, of, of, of this year, um, for, um, for about 200, uh, women in technology. Um, so these are women that work in the technology field in Denver. Uh, there were, there were about 10% of the women that came from out of town just to be a part of this, this type of learning and community. And so what we did was we did a, we did a, we did a, uh, uh, connecting on purpose exercise. And then we did, a and I set up, a uh, on the first night and then the second night, um, a second day, we did a, um, a, a mentoring session where we, where we grouped, uh, the women into groups of their experience, uh, so the number of years of experience, and then we t- grouped them with a with a person that was been in the field, um, and they had an AI conversation uh, with that mentor and these uh, around you know moments of perseverance, moments of challenge, and and how everybody got through working through how they solved um, those challenges, and you know that was probably my biggest. That's been my biggest event to date. Is that is that opportunity to speak in front of those women and, and to and to facilitate those conversations, and um, how'd it go? It was great. It was great. Yeah. I mean, it's great. Like, I mean, you no. Know, uh, I mean, when you when you see um, people having meaningful conversations right away, like within. I mean, I think that people don't uh, people question this a lot when I talk to clients or for pr- prospective clients, um, and so they they kind of have to trust you and, uh, and, and me a lot, uh, to just let us go ahead and do this stuff. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> cause it's, cause it's, cause it's never been experienced before. Um, and, um, and so I think I, you know, if, if the goal was to get these women to open up and have deep conversations really quickly, that happened, uh, for them to feel safe around other people they've never met that happened. Um, and then for, for them to go into this, uh, multi-day event, ready to have um, conversations where they could walk away with either a relationship or a person they could follow up with later in a mentor or in a fellow uh, attendee that happened. I mean, just really cool stuff. And I've done, you know, the, I've done a handful of other um, things like that. You know, uh, recently I've done, um, you know, a leadership uh, leadership program for for juniors and seniors in high school, uh, taking the AI work to them. Um, This last year really has been about, um, finding anywhere and anywhere, anywhere and everywhere that I could get in front of people and ask them good questions. Yeah, no kidding. I'm really curious about the, uh, about the high school thing, because I know you and brother James are both working with high schools and I'm like, you know, I just look at my own, I, I, I mean, I, it's a, it's a fucking shit show what goes on in high school, man. My daughter's in grade 10 and it's like, 
what the hell is going like I, I, mean, I don't know if it's i'm sure it's the same in the states but i mean it is it's, same, it's a it's debacle yeah, I mean, what they're learning and, 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 and yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think, I think that they're, um, you know, not only is the relationship process, you know, strained, mm-hmm. um, because you're figuring yourself out as a oh, human yeah. being, you know, um, but also the, you know, you're trying to learn stuff. Yeah. <laughs> at the same time, now we can get into a conversation on whether that's the right stuff to learn or whatever. Yeah, that's well, a whole that's other a, conversation. Yeah, that's a that's but, a rabbit the, hole we but, don't want to go down right now. <laughs> that's a rabbit hole we don't want to go down. But but the um, but you know, given the fact that you know um, that the um, giving these uh, kids, teenagers, teachers, um, a new way to look at how to connect with their students, how to, um, you know, how to uh, develop, um, you know, uh, relationships with them, how to have conversations with them. Um, it's great. You know, uh, the, 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 what happened in this, in, in my most recent situation, and my goal is essentially is to, is to reach 10,000, um, potential leaders or 10,000 leaders by 2021. And I'm 50, I'm 50 in man. I'm moving, I'm moving fast. I'm moving. So before you get into, before Um, you get into what happened, how did you like, where did you get the idea to do this? And how did you get in, get in a position where you were in front of students? I'm super curious about that. Yeah. So, um, one, my high school experience was terrible. Oh, mine too. Um, uh, so, so basically, you know, I was, uh, you know, my, um, uh, essentially I was, I had a bullying experience in junior high that led to some really significant challenges with the peer group that I had at school. And so I joined a peer, I joined a church peer group outside of school, loved it. They put me in leadership, leadership classes and leadership work like immediately in sixth and seventh grade. And that then propelled me to do a whole bunch of leadership related work in, um, in high school. Um, and then, so when I went to high school, it was a different school from my junior high. And, um, I was hoping that I wouldn't have the same, you know, challenges, uh, with my peers as I, as I did in junior high. And it just kind of, it wasn't as bad, but it was, it was close. And, um, and so I was like, okay, this is just, uh, I I just, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to do, I'll I'll get my good grades. I'll graduate. I'll make, um, you know, I'll feel proud about what I accomplished here, but uh, my focus is really outside of this place. And I could really give a rip about this place, uh, and, and, you know, ever showing up in my life again. Um, but a lot of great lessons about, you know, about that I learned in that place. Don't, and I don't, um, um, and I and I don't hold it in a in a negative space because if I didn't have that experience, I wouldn't know what uh, what real challenge right. was or what you know how to grow or how to be on my own hero's journey, you know, so to speak. And so, um, so that experience in high school has led me to be very super passionate about teenagers um, and young adults, and giving them the the tools that I was given at that age to be able to, um, to progress as a person. Uh, when, and so specifically I'm talking about leadership skills. So what does that mean? So, you know, goal setting, um, you know, uh, giving you experiences to, uh, to lead, uh, whether that be in public speaking, whether it be in group facilitation, whether it be in retreat format, you know, whether it be in service related formats. I mean, th- I had so many different leadership opportunities uh, outside of school, um, that I've just become super passionate about, um, just introducing the topic to, to them. And so that being said, um, that led me to be a, a volunteer in high schools. I've been a volunteer in high schools in Denver since, you know, for, uh, since 2010. Um, and so that, that means I do a, a whole lot of career panels. I do a whole, a whole lot of mock interviews. Oh, I didn't know I that. I do a whole lot of, 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 you know, of, of, of being in, of assisting kids, teenagers, specifically, um, in practicing, you know, what does it mean to get prepared for a career or get prepared for other stuff? And you get to drop a lot of knowledge. It's very benefits. It's, it's, it's really just a cool, fun experience. Um, and so through that, through those relationships, um, I found out that there was a, that there was a, um, a, a colleague, uh, in, in that, with that organization, um, that, uh, that needed content that needed, you know, needed help, um, filling some, uh, filling some substitute time. Uh, they, they needed, there was a, what happened was there was a teacher that left the school and they were kind of backfilling until they could find another teacher. And so 
through me consistently asking for uh, leads for me to be able to do this work. Uh, you know, I sent an email to another person. She sent that to another person. Then that got to this person. And that person said, Hey, I got a, a class that I'd love, you know, happy for you to come in and teach. And I said, sure, no problem. Um, did I have the full content developed? Nope. Um, did I have, you know, exactly what I was going to talk about? Nope. Um, but the, but I knew I could, you know, I could get in there and do some AI, real, some really good AI work. And so she wrote me back and said, I have, you know, these two dates, uh, do you want to, uh, do you want to take them? I said, which one do you want to take? And I said, I'll take them both. And she's like, okay, cool. Awesome. <laughs> you can have them both. And, and you know, what I didn't find out, um, what I didn't find out through this process was that each day was actually two classes. So essentially I was teaching, uh, four, you know, two, um, you know, two groups of kids twice over the course of two weeks. Okay. Um, I thought I was teaching one group of kids for 90 minutes. Uh, and so I just, I, so this all happened before leaf week, uh, which was about three or four weeks ago. Uh, this, when we're recording, this is the end of November or beginning of beginning of November. Uh, this all happened like at the early October. And so I was going into leaf week to design. And essentially during leaf week, I designed my, my two 90 minute sessions. And then I got, and then I got an email from her while I was at leaf week, literally the last day. And she's like, I'll see you, you know, uh, you're going to have two, two sets of 25 kids. Cause I had asked her how many kids were in the mm -hmm. class. And I was like, Oh crap, this is two classes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I had to, I had to, you know, quickly revamp, you know, my, my stuff into two sessions, which worked out fine. You know, we have an incredible community that helped me kind of build that, but, but that's kind of how I got, you know, the, got the lead, uh, you know, was, uh, was just a persistence. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and reaching out to my network. And so how did, what did you do with them? So, uh, in our community, there is, uh, there's two frameworks. One's called air and one called soar. Uh, -huh. uh air is, uh, appreciate, um, imagine and reflect and make a plan. Uh, soar is strengths, opportunities, aspirations, and results. And so I was just sitting at the last part of, um, uh, when this happened, when I got this email about there being two classes and I noticed that my, that my company is called the center for awesomeness. I love it. And so, um, so I was like, Oh, awesome. Soar air mm -hmm. seven letters. Mm -hmm. Huh? Okay. Let's break this into an air. Let's, let's convert air into awe and soar into some. And so that's what I did. Essentially I converted air into, uh, into awe, um, which is uh, appreciate, <clears throat> wonder and energize. Mm. Uh, and so the first class was all about, uh, appreciating, um, uh, appreciating, uh, what leadership and what leadership could be. I, I had them do an improv game called zip, zap, zop, mm -hmm. which basically is a, is a, is three people stand in a circle and they point at each other and say, zip, zap, zop in that order. And you do it as fast as you can. And essentially it gets really out of control really fast and people forget the words and stuff like that. And I use that as an opportunity to talk about appreciating leadership mm -hmm. and appreciating communication. And then, uh, and then I had them wonder about what it would be like to, um, to, uh, to be a leader and to communicate effectively, uh, and who in their life has been a, a leader that, uh, that's, that's, you know, that's, that they've modeled or they've looked up to. Um, and then I had them energize on a, on a way for them to immediately take some of the skills and the qualities and what they learned from the leaders in their life or being a leader and it directly impact uh, or set up a commitment for them to use that in their life uh, right away. And we did, you know, write pair shares in that process and they shared and uh, I have worksheets where, um, you know, I see all their answers and it's just amazing. <laughs> it's just amazing <laughs> to look at their answers. Um, and, uh, and then I finished that class with a, with a feedback of what was one thing you liked and, you know, what's really cool about high school kids, teenage kids, human beings in general is that, you know, they may show you, uh, they may like project out, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, uh, some way. And then, but when they're reflective and they, and they're writing something that, that might be private or that might, they might know might be only be read by somebody like a teacher or somebody they respect, they write, they wrote some really powerful stuff, man. Uh, so even though it looked as though they might not have been paying attention or they might not have been interested in the material, what they wrote tells a totally different story.
That is absolutely amazing, man. You know, and I think it's because like that experience is so like the one that you helped create with those students is so fucking far outside of my anything that was my high school experience. Like there was no moments like that. And the, the cool thing is that even if there might be some that take, you know, what they, what they wanted, what they wanted to do and like take it out into the world in some small way or some big way. But just the fact that you exposed kids that age to a different way of thinking is a seed that has been planted that I bet you will come back to, you know, will grow uh, in those kids sometime in the future in a really powerful way, man. Cause I mean, I, I don't even know it's impossible to know, but I mean, I wonder what might have happened with me in my life if I had known that that was even possible. Not, I mean, at, at any time, but maybe like especially in high school, you know, because it, it could have been just profoundly impactful. So uh, I'll read you two two uh, you know feedback mm, yeah, comments that. that the that they gave me. So w- the first one, we got to think and reflect on what we want for our future goals. We got to plan out what steps we need to take to reach those goals. Yeah. Another one. One thing I liked about this class today was thinking about the future in small pieces to understand what steps we need to be successful. Um, this class was very reflective of the future. It's a good place to reflect on what your goals are and where you want to be and how you want to get there. Yeah. Like that. Uh, this, this, this one, this one, this one, this one, I got to hang. I was really into the subject. Thank you so much for coming today. Keep doing what you're doing. Oh man. Uh, I mean, it's just, yeah. And, uh, so from a, from an engagement perspective, but for, for both classes, we had 40, 45, 40, 48 students in, in both, you know, the second class I did some, which is a whole nother conversation. We don't need to go down that rabbit hole, uh, right now, but you get kind of get the drift of, of how AI can be, you know, adapted, uh, to talk about leadership. Um, but the, um, of the of the of the forty something students that were there, we got about uh, we only had two or three people that didn't participate, meaning handing in a worksheet mm-hmm. uh, at the end. And then we all, and from the feedback perspective, we got about um, about fifty fifty percent of the of the class to fill out a feedback a filled feedback sheet. Yeah, for high school, that's and, incredible. I mean, it's just, I mean, so to me, like I, the the teachers, the teacher, it's uh, she was like, I can't, I don't even, I don't even know you how you did that. <laughs> but what you did was amazing. Uh, and so, um, and so I'm working on getting her to write a, to write a, um, cause this was the first time that I did this. And so what, um, what I'm focused on now is, you know, is, is sharing these, this feedback and sharing some of the things that these students wrote and finding other places to just go, um, you know, do it. And what I'm hoping to do here is, uh, is set it up so that, my, uh, my, I want obviously want to get paid to come in and do this, but many of the schools, uh, that, that's still a challenge, sure. um, you know, for the, for them to have that type of budget or, you know, or, or something like, or, you know, have any way to be able to pay a full rate that I pay. So I'm still trying to figure out, you know, how I can actually, um, potentially have other, like have my paying clients sponsor a class or, mm. or do something along those lines. What a cool idea. Um, to get, to get them to be able to, to get for me to be able to do this more often and, and, and have the barriers to entry be smaller. Yeah. You know, an ongoing thing would be cool too. Like I'm one thing that I'm really like, I mean, you know, I, I run masterminds and like that, that kind of concept where it's, you know, our, our masterminds are very AI centric. I would say it's definitely a key part of the operating system of our masterminds. They go for a year and, but that model could like the the model of over time, you know, close relationships, psychological safety, and it being about learning and then implementing and implementing with implementing the skills you learned with the accountability of your peer group and also the support of your peer group. Um, oh shit! I just dropped my tea there. Um, that uh, that could revolutionize learning, man. Like especially in the corporate mm-hmm. setting where it's so freaking, you know, the companies waste millions billions of dollars on training and uh just the way they do it you know it's basically go in yeah. dump a bunch of information and leave actually it was funny i uh 
after the uh, after the leaf training, the very next two days I was back at work, I went to the university and took like a two day workshop, and I wanted to blow my fucking brains out, man. It was it was so bad compared to compared to the leaf experience where it's like uplifting and experiential, and you know uh, what does he say? S- uh, smart physiology and all these things, and you go back and you sit in the classroom, and you're like, oh my god. Like I can't even be in this room right now. It's so boring, yeah. so disengaging, and it just drives home the point that the world is calling for this. But anyways, what I was thinking was would be cool. A cool program for you uh, would be maybe to like have taken some of those super engaged students and have an ongoing AI based mentorship program. You know that would be a that'd be a cool mm-hmm. thing. But uh, yeah, yeah. The the, um, the there's been a lot of great um, generative ideas so far around how I can get to ten thousand. Yeah you know, by 2021. Right. And so, you know, I, I, but I got to be super creative about it because, you know, um, uh, to make sure that the, that, um, you know, we can support all the things that I'm doing and, you know, cause we all, we all have a finite amount of time. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Um, yeah, you know, it's funny. So at work, I'm, uh, like basically what I've, the cool, I think one of the coolest things about AI that, you know, when you you imagine facilitating uh, a session of some sort, like we did a three day event, you know, last year in St. Louis, with, or earlier this year, I guess in St. Louis, it was f- absolutely incredible. But you know, but there's also like a, a an even a ninety minute session. I mean, AI can happen in a conversation; it doesn't matter. But but the point is that it's the safe. Like so, a lot. I'm imagining people listening to this who've never facilitated anything. I know I, me too. I mean, I was shitting my pants, man, before I, but it is the easiest thing to facilitate in a way. Like when you look at what John does, totally. When you look at what John does, I mean, that level of that world-class level of facilitation is, is just incredible, but you can't fuck it up, man. Like, because it's the, it's the, it's still, even if it doesn't go like you think it is, it's still such a powerful experience that nobody's ever had before. Like I did my first core value session outside my team, like outside of my team, maybe like four, four or five months ago. And it was with this team of lean six Sigma black belts and the, their, their, their boss comes in and he goes, he's like got a bead of sweat running down his forehead. I don't know if I was telling you the story already, but he had like a bead of sweat running down his forehead. He's like, they're real skeptical about this man. And I'm like, because they're all like, you know, process oriented, data focused people. And he's like, they're they're yeah, real skeptical. Yeah. I'm like, that's okay. Perfect. Yeah. Right. I said, you know what, man? <laughs> nobody can resist this. And nobody wants to. Once it so we we the first question was, why is it important for you to be here and participate in shaping your team's core values? And how will you show up powerfully to make this, this a meaningful experience for yourself? And everybody in the room. And so the one that kind of the el- the elder statesman in the gr- gr- group goes, what is it? What do you mean by powerfully? And I said, well, that's a great question. I mean, to me, it means uh, it, it's, it's really about what it means to you. But I mean, what it means to me is like engaged and empathetic and curious and fully present and all that stuff. And I said, what does it mean to you? And he goes, no, that's what it means to me. And I'm really happy that we're using intentional language. And that was literally two minutes in. And it was like, boom. And so like – now though, man, like what it's crazy what we're doing. Like, so I just had somebody, I'm talking to people every day about this. Like uh, everybody I talk to, I talk to about this pretty much. And, and like, it's, it's, I just got an email today. I mean, basically what I got on the go right now is everything from using AI to, uh, create a more vibrant and alive technology leaders community to, um, using it to, uh, help rethink a partnership between our company and uh, and a key charity they support to mm-hmm. um, working with uh, some of our senior leadership team. Like I'm going to pitch some big ass events to them next week, and I'm I am so fucking passionate about it. I can't imagine they're going to say no. I just can't even. It doesn't even. It's not even on my radar. Like that they would. Yeah, and so, but also like what we're going to do is uh, there's this. Uh, there's a, a organization, this is outside work, but there's an organization in town uh, called the, the London Middlesex Suicide Prevention Council. And so they, they're they one of the, like an organization, they, they're, you know, they're, they provide training and like really, like really some important programs uh, as really obviously related to preventing suicide. And so I've done a couple of a speaking thing for them and stuff like that, but they're suffering from 
uh, like a lack of volunteer engagement. They've been doing the same shit for forever. You know, they got the same small core group of volunteers. And so I was, I, I'm a friends with one of the women who volunteers there and uh, a mental health professional. And we pitched this idea to her and I said, we could bring, like, you got to like, think about this. Okay. Imagine if we brought people together for one day and she was like, I said, she, I said, what do you want to like, what feels like something important for you to focus on? And she goes low. This is a perfect example of the difference between typical thinking and AI thinking. Um, she goes, it's low volunteer engagement. I'm like, okay, what if we focused on a vibrant, engaged, passionate volunteer community? You know, like thinking about that. And then as we were talking, I was like, you know, we were talking about the event. I was like, maybe that's not actually the thing though. Maybe the thing is actually that you need to get the whole system together to help create services and, and, you know, like a mission and vision and services that people are engaged in and want to like participate in. Maybe that's actually a better idea, right? Is to re, I think we called it, uh, reflect, uh, reimagine, re- reflect, reimagine and, and re-engage or something like that. Um, and so, but the idea would be yeah. do one day, a one day session and get people from like anybody who's been touched by suicide, man. Like, so get the, obviously the organization, but it could be people that, that uh, the organization has helped, uh, you know, not commit suicide. It could be the parents of people who the organization has helped or parents who have loved lo- lost loved ones to suicide. Police. It could be first responders. It could be some politicians. Find some people in the freaking media who have been touched by suicide and get them to participate in the redesigning and reimagining and reinvigoration of this organization and come up with what the future looks like. I mean, it, and they she, they basically lost their shit, you know, and and. <laughs> And I'm doing it for free, totally doing it for free because I feel passionately, obviously, about this subject. But yeah. I mean, it's the more, you know, and what's, what I find amazing about this is the more I do this, the, the more I talk about it, everything in my life is changing, man. Like I and my wife was, we were walking around yesterday. We, my kids are old enough now that like they were nowhere to be found at ha- Halloween. So they're with their friends. But, you know, so we're walking around the neighborhood and uh, my wife goes, you're, you're basically unrecognizable as a person from who you were just a few years ago. And appreciative inquiry is one of the reasons why, because I, when oh, yeah. I, t- I, I can see that. Oh man. yeah. I can like, I mean, that. I walk faster. I, I feel it. I see it every time. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, when, you know, when I, when I saw you just a couple weeks ago, it's the first time I'd seen you since, since I think that the, the dad, I don't know you were at the yeah, yeah, yeah. one. So I mean, it's April. Right. But, but you can just see the, I mean, not only did you shave your head, um, but the, uh, you know, physically look yeah. different, but the, uh, but you could just tell, you know, that there's a, you know, that there's a pep in your step. And the other aspect too, that I want to acknowledge, um, is, is that, you know, when you, um, you, uh, from the outside, you know, you kind of went down this path of like trying to do a, this solopreneur, uh-huh. you know, own your own thing, you know, type of situation. And, you know, uh, I've always honored, you know, your, um, you know, your openness to, being open to see where this goes and for you to, for, you know, for you to be able to land at a, at a, you know, at a, at a, at a place that can give you a, a really great, um, uh, uh, place to stand as a leader. Uh, I think that's really, um, it's just remarkable. Well, like, yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate that. Like we I think we were talking about that. We were talking about this at the leap, but that was a very yeah. hard thing for me to work myself through emotionally, right. Was the idea yeah. of going back to a job and, Interestingly yeah. enough, you know, like that, I, I really struggle with that. And, and even, even when our financial situation was saying, listen, dickhead, go back to work, <laughs> you know, I, uh, my wife was super supportive, uh, of me in, in this yeah. effort. And, and I don't regret it. Like I, the, the, the taking a year and a half and, you know, st- starting my own business and, you know, running masterminds, I mean, it was, it was an amazing experience. And, it made me so much more like I learned so many things during that time about myself and new skills like AI that made me so much more effective as a leader, like crazy, like crazy more effective. And so, but what I realize now, like, and what I always tell people is like, when we, so we talk about AI and, you know, you, you know, a lot of times people, I think, think it's, it's about, you know, like big summits and, you know, getting all these people together in a room, but it's every, it's, it's, it's also an approach to life, 
And it's, Mm -hmm. it's amazing how, and one of the things I love talking about with people is just how fucking powerful every single one of us are and like how much power we have to make the world a better place. And if you treat every single interaction you have with somebody as a sacred opportunity to leave them a little better off. And oftentimes that's through the asking of generative questions. Like the mm-hmm. influence you have and the effect you have, and it's just, it's crazy what happens. And it, I'm like, I, more people need to know this. Like it's such common sense when you say it out loud, like it's, you know, but it's like, it never gets discussed somehow. Like, why, how is that? Yeah, no, it, 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 well, well, the, the I think that the um, you know well I think human nature kind of blocks a lot of um, you know uh, a lot of a lot of movement in, in the direction of of optimism. I'll yeah. just I'll just kind of say it that way. You know the the the, the ability for us to um, you know uh, to honor both the good and the not so good in our life um, is uh, is heavily heavily like pushed towards honoring the not so good all the yeah. time. And keeping your focus on the not so good, right? And so, you know, the only way to change that is to have, you know, a lot of modeling and a lot of a lot of you know persistence and a lot of accountability and a lot of personal ownership of of, of shifting that worldview for yourself. Um, and um, you know, that for me in my own personal development journey over the last you know 10, 15 years, you know, I I couldn't find a place to actually live that. I could find it to, to the place to live that when I was with like specific communities, I'd travel to them or I'd be there on Sunday. If it was, it was my, it was my spiritual community, you know, but during the week it was just so hard. Um, you know, especially working in the work that I do, which was, you know, which essentially was solving people's problems and everybody getting upset at me because their password, yeah, didn't work. Yeah. you know, um, but the, but to, to just be in this place now where, you know, where people are, are so, um, they're just excited about moving forward yeah. <laughs> about, about having a way to move forward about, you know, being curious again. Um, and it's because you and I are having those conversations with people, yeah. you know, um, you know, or we're, or we're acknowledging, you know, the, the gifts of people. And just by just doing that one thing of, of acknowledging and appreciating, you know, the, the things you like in other people, it, it's a law of reciprocity, man. Like it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Whether you believe in karma or not, um, you know, there's definitely a, you know, a law of reciprocity that, uh, that, 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 that a person, when you say thank you to somebody or you say, Hey, that's a really, really great uh, thing you did. They naturally want to tell you that in response. Totally. Or tell you something about you. Right. Um, you know, yesterday I, I gave, uh, I was, uh, I have some cards that I sell. Um, uh, they're called awesomeness cards. And, um, and I, you know, leave, leave them from time to time with, uh, with, a with a waiter or a waitress or, you know, and things like that. And so I was filling one out for a waiter the other day. Um, and, um, and in the process, I heard somebody say it was their birthday at the table next to mine. And, um, and, sh- and so I wrote another one out and I said, happy birthday. And, uh, and I gave it to her and like, I thought she was going to cry, dude. Oh man, that's <laughs> she, amazing. Because, because people are so yearning, yeah. right? For, 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 they get, you know, a lot, many, many people might be blessed with getting a lot of love from their, from their, from their people that are closest to them, you know, or, or and, and sometimes in, you know, that's not the case, but, you know, for a complete stranger to, to, uh, to celebrate you or to at least take the time, even, in, even if it's only a couple seconds, you know, that's how we change the world. You know, that's how, you know, we, we, we be the change, you know, is, uh, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. You know what? I can't believe it's been an hour already. Holy shit. That's it. And you know what? That's a great, uh, great place to end it. And I'll let you uh, go and get back to your, uh, your evening, but Hey man, I, I would love to do this again. I, I, cause I, yeah. I think every time we have a conversation, things are going to be profoundly different in both of our lives for the better, uh, and for the impact mm-hmm. that we're having. So for people that want to know more about you and the center of awesomeness and all the great things you're doing, what's the best way for them to find you? Best way to find us is our website. It's thecenterforawesomeness.com. Again, thecenterforawesomeness.com. Uh, come on by and and, uh, and 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 chat there. All right, buddy. Well, listen, I'll put all that. I'll put that in the show notes page. And uh, it was uh, great to see you a couple of weeks ago, and it was absolutely awesome to catch up, man. It's a pleasure, man. Look forward to the next all right, one, buddy. Take care. 
And once again, there you have it. Wonderful conversation with my buddy, Nick. Um, I'm sure you get the vibe from that conversation that he's a great guy doing amazing things. And uh, I always, always like to connect with him. And I really, I said it in the podcast, and I want to say it again. Thank you for making me feel so welcome at that first big foray of mine into personal development, uh, because that welcome helped set the tone. I, I've, honestly, it helped set the tone for my development for the next few years, uh, which was great. And uh Truly grateful, brother. And you know that if there's anything I can do to help you, I will be more than happy to do that. And I certainly know that the uh, sentiment is shared the other way around. So good luck, brother. And we will talk soon. And we will see you on the next episode of Inquisitive Souls.